Hi there, I'm John from cncr.com and today we'll make custom family murals for the wall. I guess you can say I'm not only the owner of cncr.com, but I'm also a customer. And what I like to do is do personal projects to learn and really excel in certain specific areas. One of them that I've been wanting to improve for a while is actually family murals on wood. It's actually quite difficult to get a really good image. That's obviously me. And there's Simon. I'll show you all three of them. That's one. Second one is a little bit smaller. So Simon and his mom. And the third one is of course only Simon because Simon loves to look at himself in the mirror. So it's a little bit hard to see with the lighting in the shop here. But you can see here, there's Simon. And what he's holding is his favorite stick. Anywhere he goes, he likes to carry a stick with him, whether it's inside the house or out. And you can see how lifelike the image actually is on the wood. The nice thing about using wood for this certain application is that each one will be unique. So even if I made the same thing five times or a hundred times, they don't have different grain patterns and wood sort of density. So everyone is unique, even though they're the same image. In this case here, there's three. And the way I'm going to lay it out is I'm going to have a big picture of Simon, so he'll definitely notice this. Then I have the other two pictures here and here on the living room wall. I'm going to grab the smaller ones, easier to hold and show you guys. So what, here is, what the material here is acacia, and it's laminated. And you can tell just because if you look at the back, you can see the different strips. So it's not a lot, I don't even know where you'd get us all a piece of acacia of the size that I use it here in the shop. So these are just extras that I had after I'd finished up a project. So I thought, well, this is a great idea to do, uh, you know, to decorate the house a bit and have some nice family pictures that are not just, you know, regular pictures. And this is actually something that will last a very long time. The depth of the laser engraving is roughly an eighth inch or three millimeters. And again, you can see it's solid wood. So it's about, I'd say a little over an inch thick. So definitely nice, thick, holds very well. And when it goes on the wall, everybody will notice it. So the first step of doing that after doing all the Im image optimization, all that kind of stuff, is actually to use the laser behind me and actually laser engrave all of the images that you see here. So for this project here, it's a personal project. So I don't really care too much about the time involved with doing it. Uh, that being said, it's a very, very slow project to do because of the settings I'm using. Every pass that I'm going over with the laser is removing roughly a 1 16th of material, which is roughly, I guess, two millimeters off the surface of it. So when I'm doing multiple passes, I'm taking that much off basically on every pass. Now there's some variance on that because it's based on material density. So if a material is not dense at all, I'll go deeper with the same power setting with the laser than I would otherwise. So when you're doing something like this one on Acacia, and you can see it's laminated by the little lines going uh, vertically on the video. You know that it's laminated, so that means there's some hard sections and there's some soft sections. So what you wanna do is generally go a little bit slower so that when you hit the hard sections, you're still getting some depth. And when you're going to the soft section, well, it doesn't really matter because you won't really notice. Now, if you use too much power when you're actually burning into wood, what you end up happening is too much charring and you end up losing a lot of resolution in the photograph. Now in this case here, the first two photographs were actually done professionally with a white background. I was wearing a white shirt and everybody was basically wearing white. So, you know, the contrast was just absolutely perfect. The very last picture is the one I just took of Simon when he was in the sidewalk outside. And it just happens that there's a lot of busy stuff happening in that, but the contrast is good enough so you can see the photograph. Now going back to the power, if I use too much power when I'm going over this, so let's say I go, um, think of it like an oven basically. So if, if you cook something, let's say you bake it at 400 degrees for 20 minutes, you might say, well, why don't I just put it 800 for 10 minutes? And any baker will tell you that's a good way to make a lot of scrap. It's the same thing with the laser. Um, if you're going over it with too much power, the burning is too much and it's spread out over too large of an area. And the problem with that is that you end up losing a lot of resolution. Now the other way around, is going really slow. So again, back to the baking thing. So if, let's say you say, well, if 400 degrees is good for 20 minutes, why don't I do it for 200 degrees, you know, for 
40 minutes. Again, you'll have problems with the same thing with laser engraving. You end up with the same issues that you would have. Um, if you go too slow, well then you're just wasting a lot of time on the machine and yourself watching the machine work. And if you go the other way around, you're just creating a lot of charcoal that doesn't actually produce a nice sharp image. Now this one here of Simon came out really, really nice, uh, but it was a challenge to sand because I'm removing, moving, uh, removing so much material across the surface of it. The center doesn't really have any large flat areas to sort of rest on. Well, in the first two photographs, that wasn't an issue because I had, you know, the white doesn't actually laser engrave anything, as you can see, like around his jacket. So that, the sander can sit on that and sand away and clean off the surface without touching the charcoal that's underneath the surface. Now do keep in mind that this is, looks really, really dirty and it looks really rough. And of course, the reason for that is because the laser's pushing up a lot of smoke and resin and glues and all that kind of stuff. And it's selling back on the surface of the material. So that's why we do the sanding to remove all of that. And again, you can look at the close up so you can get an idea. And what's nice about laser engraving these is you get a lot of very, very high detail, but you also get some feeling. So here I can actually feel my fingers because there's some depth to it. Same thing with here. You can feel the, you know, the folds in the fabric. So it's really quite, you know, you know, a unique way of looking at photographs and it's a fun way to actually feel the photograph that you have. So you obviously saw on the laser that these pieces were a lot larger than what you end up with. And that's on purpose because what I did is I used, again, they're pieces of extra from another, from another job. So what I did is I used the laser to actually outline all of them out. So that means I knew exactly where to cut uh, to make them the perfect size that I wanted for my wall. So before doing that though, I have to do a lot of sanding. There's quite a bit of sanding involved because you have laser engraving up to an eighth inch deep. And what you want to do is have a nice clean surface. So it comes out of the machine looking, you know, it always looks really, really rough. And then when you use the laser, all that smoke and all the stains and all the resins, all that kind of stuff that's naturally in the wood just goes over the whole image. So what the sanding does, it just cleans everything right out and actually gives you the nice contrast that you're looking for in the final image. So as I go about sanding all of this, you'll notice that I do have a cut outline all the way around and that's exactly what it is. I'm gonna cut that out afterwards, but first I wanna sand the surface. What happens is if you cut it first and then you sand it, you might end up going a little bit round along the edges and I want this to be nice and sharp. So that's why you see sanding and you see actually all the resolution, especially on Simon's picture here, you can see how easily it cleans right up. Again, if, whenever you're doing laser pyrography, there's a lot of things to keep in mind. Resolution is one of them, but you also want to have enough sort of white where no laser engraving is happening so that it has somewhere to rest on while it's removing all the smoke and the resin from the rest of the surface. Here I'm just using a, a scale saw. It's not, a, not an issue uh, to cut this stuff. The material is roughly an inch thick, so it's really solid wood. And again, again it's a laminate, so there's some little bit of glues and stuff involved with it. Now, I'm not, I don't care too much about being totally straight. That's why I'm not using a track saw. So what I'm doing instead is just cutting it out and then I'll just sand the edges flush um, as they should be. Now you'll notice I did add the weight. What was happening is I was pushing so much on the saw, it was actually moving around the finished pyrography picture. So putting a weight on it solves a lot of problems uh, for this situation and a lot of other ones here in the shop that I have where I have to hold something down permanently so I get a nice clean cut. So to cut these out, I was thinking of a few different ways. Um, I have quite a few tools here in the shop that I could have done it. One is actually I could have just used the laser, you know, to cut all the way through this, but I wanted to have a nice clean edge on these. So if I use the laser, it'd be a burnt edge. So I didn't really want that for this specific application and it would have taken a while to do it too. Uh, I could have used the router as well. The router would have cut out this perfectly to size to begin with. And then what I could have done is stuck it on the laser and then do the laser engraving. But what I would want to do is keep it a larger piece because it makes sanding a lot easier. It's quite difficult to sand the edge of something here nice and clean when you have a drop off. But if you have a larger piece of wood, well then you're just sanding more flat all the way around. So it's a little bit easier to work with that way. 
and you know at least for my personal project for this one here. So after cutting them out the next step obviously is to go ahead and add tongue oil onto the surface of all of them to give a lot more contrast to the wood. Now the fun part is all the sanding that I have to do. Uh, not only do I have to sand the surface, which is pretty much done here, I'll give it another little uh, covering after I've done all the edges. But the edges are, came out really, really nice. Of course, I could have used the laser to cut them out, um, and then I wouldn't have to sand it. Uh, the only issue with that is it just takes so long, there's no point. The skill saw does a job in a fraction of the time of a laser. I also have a full sheet CNC router too, and technically I could have cut this stuff out using the full sheet router quite easily. Uh, then I wouldn't have to sand anything, but it's not a big deal. Um, I've done enough sanding in the past that I know how to do it by now. Now after doing that, what I want to do is make sure I have nice clean edges all the way around, front and back. Because what the laser does is it puts smoke everywhere, but it can also put smoke in places that you don't really notice until we start the finishing process. Now for the finishing process for all three of these, uh, all I did was put a layer of tongue oil and I found that works just amazing on a ton of wood, uh, different wood projects. Sometimes you use clear coat, but what tongue oil does is it adds a little bit more warmth than a clear coat does. Clear coat adds a little bit of contrast, but nothing near what the tongue oil does. Now you notice I'm doing all the edges and they're moving around a bit. Um, I'm limited in space here in the shop right now, so what I have to do is make do with whatever tables I have. And the best table I have that I use for most projects is actually my full sheet router. Um, it's the perfect size to be doing this kind of stuff and I have just enough room to fit in and put everything uh, the way it should be so I can finish it up. So after the tongue oil is applied you can see um, everything's nice and sharp. Now of course when I cut these out it's a little bit rough using the skill saw so I just sanded all the edges to be nice and clean. So some things to keep in mind with these kind of images. What you want to do is have a lot of sharp contrast. If you have a muddy image, you end up with a muddy sort of result on the wood. So if you look at it yourself and you see really, you know, bright, sort of not bright, if you see black and white images, like you see here, these are actually from color photographs, but there's enough, enough contrast when I turn them into grayscale and then turn them into black and white using a dithering system to produce the resolution I wanted to have on there. I actually really like how these fingers came out great. That's, that's perfect lighting from the photograph. So those are, these two are two interior pictures. This one and this one. So again, everything's nice and sharp. You can see his fingers very clearly. Again, even the, you know, little strands of hair, you actually see that here, which is kind of neat. So it's very high resolution using the laser. And of course, Simon's picture here, that was actually done outside by me when he was walking on the sidewalk. If you look at it closely, you can see a sidewalk in the background. If I get the lighting to work well. But again, everything is nice and sharp. You can see every individual little strand of hair on the photograph. So how do you go about getting something like this done, you know, for your family? Uh, the, First step is to get really good photographs. Again, high contrast photos, where they're, if they're color high contrast, they come out gray, generally black and white, which is what these ones were. And the next step after that, send a few different ones. You know, for some reason, some elements of a photograph just don't work out, you know, for, for whatever reason, when it comes to making them optimized to laser engraving. The next step after that is we do the image conversion, all that kind of stuff, to get a nice clean image on the wood. You have to pick what kind of wood species you want. In this case here is just acacia, you know, laminated that I use quite a bit of here in the shop. But if you want it to be on maple, pine, oak, you know, sycamore, whatever, we can do that for you here as well. There's no real size limitations either. Because if you think about it, let's say you had an image that was like 10 feet across. We can easily just go like this and tile them or tile them with a little bit of space too. So there's like a ton of options when it comes to doing this kind of stuff. So the first thing you want to think about is, you know, when do I need it for? Uh, what kind of budget do I'm, am I trying to stick to? Because budget is directly related to the size and the wood species that we use. After that, you know, we'll figure it out together and we'll ship it right to your door.